and welcome to another special edition of the World Beyond Belief for the United We Strike Marathon. My name is Mindy Erkin Marco, and I'm here today with Paul Marco. Hello, and uh, welcome from my end. Today's an interesting discussion, I hope, because I think something big is happening now. I think that the movement that we've all been following that's been disclosing what's really going on and exposing the controllers that are enslaving us in this matrix. I think the movement to uncover it seems to be dissipating. It seems to be falling apart. But actually, it's morphing. It's morphing into what I think is going to be another movement. Uh, here's, what's, here's what it seems to me is happening. A lot of us are focused on the dark side. A lot of us, like we're making a video right now on cancer's role in the eugenics agenda. It's heavyweight stuff. It's really dark. And I think it needs to be out. I think that people are recently awakening, really need to know how they're killing us and, and how to escape it, actually. I think it's important that this information get out. I think it's important that people see this information. But I also see icons in this awakening movement uh, falling apart, becoming less influential, not really uh, leading the pack like they used to. And some of them are, are, are being discredited or falling over to the mainstream media. I know we always talk about uh, the the what used to be the alternative media, which is now filling in for the mainstream. It seems to be coming apart, but I think it's coming apart because it's going to morph into something else. We talked a lot this week about uh, the process that a caterpillar goes through before it turns into a butterfly. And it seems that the caterpillar completely turns to, to goo. The, the caterpillar is, is not there any longer. It's, uh, it's replaced by a, a jelly-like substance, which reformulates itself into the beautiful butterflies that we see. And in that reformation pattern, there are uh, cells that push this reconstruction. And... Looking at what we've gone through and what we're now going through, I think that these, I don't know, these little cells that are going to push for the reformation are now going to be, I don't know whether we can see them taking shape or, or just appearing or just having some kind of influence. I know there's a lot of study in black goo and other things that seem to be on the dark side but also on the light side. So. We'll just have to see how it'll come out. Now, going through this mindset, we posted a, an article called Freedom Begins Within, From the Authoritarian Self to the Liberated Self. And I think this kind of topic is might be where this new movement's going to lead. Uh, Self-work, moving us toward liberation, uh, regardless of what the matrix does, regardless of what the oligarchs do. So we're going to read a little bit from this, and then uh, we'll do color commentary. This is a, it's an article you can find on our blog, which is pineconeutopia.wordpress.com. It's called Freedom Begins From Within, The Authoritarian Self to the Liberated Self, and it's by Gary Z. McGee, and he's a staff writer for Waking Times. It starts off with this Quote by Arno Gruen, who I've never heard of, and it goes, quote, If people base their identity on identifying with authority, freedom causes anxiety. They must then conceal the victim in themselves by resorting to violence against others. That's heavy. You have to think about that. And then the article goes, Mindy's going to read a while, and then we're going to talk. Okay. Freedom is both the easiest thing to gain and the hardest thing to hold on to. We can courageously declare ourselves free in one breath, while in the next breath, 
meekly kowtow to authority. It's like an Orwellian doublespeak somersaulting through our heads. Freedom is debt slavery. Freedom is obeying orders. Freedom is paying taxes against our will. Freedom is keeping our mouth shut when a cop speaks. Freedom is forcing our will onto others. Freedom is codependence on an unhealthy authoritarian state. Really? I'll go to the next paragraph. Cognitive dissonance is our ego's saving grace. We convince ourselves we are free, even when we're not, so that our pride isn't harmed. We convince ourselves we are free so as to maintain our comfort zones. We convince ourselves we are free because if we're not free, then our existence is null. In the end, freedom becomes a cliché concept we toss around inside of, of the very box we're trying desperately to think outside of. When it comes down to it, liberty begins within. It begins by first admitting that we must free ourselves from our inner tyrant before we can give birth to our inner liberator. It begins by digging deep and ousting the king trying to rule, decommissioning the commissioner trying to micromanage, and banishing the warden trying to keep order. It begins by not talking like rigid authoritarians to ourselves. Let's break it down. Authoritarian self-speak. None are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. That quote by Johann Wolfgang van Gogh. We live in an age of hyperconformity. It goes widely unrecognized because it has become the rigid reality that modern culture indoctrinates into its members. It's even considered admirable somehow to be well-adjusted to a sick society. Of course, our cognitive dissonance usually prevents us from admitting that such is the case. This is because we are primarily psychosocial animals who create a pleasing to others false self in order to alleviate the deep-seated fear of being hurt or abandoned by others, which is fine if one lives in a healthy culture, not so fine if one lives in a profoundly unhealthy, unsustainable authoritarian culture such as the cultures dominating the world today. So what does a psychosocial animal that's raised in an authoritarian culture do? Well, they speak to themselves in an authoritarian voice, for one. Their inner tyrant is constantly pushing its authoritarian agenda, keeping the rebellious liberator at bay, lest he rise up and ruin the comfort zone or culture malaise that has kept the inner tyrant safe and secure within the social milieu for so long. So even if self-liberation is the goal, the inner tyrant rises up and barks in its best drill sergeant voice, stop dreaming there's no such thing as freedom, or shut up and obey like everybody else, or you're not worthy of freedom, what makes you so special, or this is just the way things are, deal with it, or don't rock the boat, it's easier that way. If you, if you, I'm, I'm deviating, deviating from the article. If you find yourself, you'll find yourself telling yourself things like this to allow yourself to fit in to this sick culture. You're going along with the fact that you think that there's an actual election going on in the United States, and it's not just a puppet show puppeted by whoever's puppeting these two. Uh, assholes that are that are running for election uh, it's easier to go along and look like your neighbors you know and not realize that you're bullshitting yourself that's what cognitive dissonance is all about it's self bullshitting go do you want to continue okay continuing the problem with this is that the majority of us cannot distinguish the indoctrinated authoritarian voice from the voice of our own free will and we then confuse it for our own free will. Out of confusion and fear, we give in to the inculcation. We remain authoritarian unto ourselves. We go with the flow, even though the flow is clearly poisonous. Okay, and then, then the article goes into five reasons uh, why belief in authority is the most dangerous superstition. If you've ever followed the work of 
Oh my goodness. Uh, James Corbett, Larkin Rose. Uh, you can you get a feeling <clears throat> about how dangerous authority is and obedience to the, the authority is. The obedience to the authority is the main thing that's taught in schools. It's the main thing that's shown in the media. And it's the most dangerous thing to freedom because it's the opposite of freedom. Okay, there's a here, I'm getting into the five reasons. Ironically, the cure for authoritarianism is self-authority or free will. They seem to be opposites. The key to the cultural prison is realizing that we're all at once our own prisoner as well as our own warden. Our inner conflict between indoctrinated authoritarian and rebellious liberator is precisely what keeps us unfree. But there's no conflict, really. We imprison ourselves with our own commanding words. We're always free. Our free will has only to take authority back from our inner authoritarian by using words infused with free choice in order to turn the tables on the psychosocial dynamic. Instead of listening to the commands and authoritarian orders dictated by our inner warden or king, we speak to ourselves in a way that the freedom of choice is clearly paramount, and suddenly we're able to ask ourselves, as Rumi did, why do you stay in prison when the door is wide open? And now this is probably the most exciting part of this whole article. When I read this, I thought, oh man, this is the answer. Because the article talks about <clears throat> ways to change your approach with your own mind for liberation. And of course, it's called the liberated self overcoming. And it starts off by a quote by Rob Berezny. It goes, quote, the revolution begins at home. If you overthrow yourself again and again, you might earn the right to overthrow the rest of us. Oh, that's good. I love it. Isica. Okay. So what happens when we begin to base our identity on self-authority rather than on identifying with an outside authority? What happens when freedom of choice becomes paramount despite our inner authoritarian? Freedom no longer causes anxiety in this case because we have liberated ourselves into further freedom. Indeed, we have become liberty itself by simply changing our self-speak from a commanding, certain voice to a voluntary, questioning voice, we change the paradigm. We become less rigid and more flexible. We become less invulnerable and more vulnerable. We become less fearful and more courageous. We gain authority over authoritarianism, including our own. In short, we take back our own power. And then the next paragraph goes into actually some things that you can say to yourself. It goes, instead of commands, we issue options. Quote, I can do whatever I want, like break the law or not break the law, end quote. Or, quote, I don't have to pay my taxes if I don't think it's necessary, end quote. Or, I can live whatever life I feel like living, as a statist or an anarchist, but I choose to live like an anarchist, end quote. Or, quote, I am free to do what I want, and I am choosing dangerous freedom over comfortable safety. That's really a heavy-duty one there. As Robert Heinlein said, quote, I am free no matter what rules surround me. If I find them tolerable, I tolerate them. If I find them too obnoxious, I break them. I am free because I know that alone I am morally responsible for everything I do, end quote. I think that was heavy. Mm -hmm. Also, instead of getting all wrapped up in answers, we are more capable of surrendering to ruthless questioning. Why do I think the state is immoral or not? Or would I really rather be slapped with the truth than kissed with a lie? Or how might I be suffering from cognitive dissonance or any number of cognitive biases and fallacies? Or, how has my cultural conditioning affected the way I relate to the world? Or, 
Do I have the courage to choose truth and speak out against deception? Or how can I take personal responsibility for becoming more ethical than the society I grew up in? The answers to these questions have the potential to launch our fledging liberation into further, more robust liberation. When we free ourselves into further freedom, we allow ourselves to grow. We allow our comfort zones to stretch. We become psychosocially, politically, and spiritually more flexible. We give ourselves permission to authentically live. In short, we blossom into a state of self-overcoming. Can you see how <clears throat> focusing on this strategy, the strategy of personal liberation and being a model for others' personal liberation can free us from the matrix? Because what we've been doing, I, I'm, not, I'm not reading right now. What we've been doing is we've been exposing the bad guys. And that's really an important thing to do. But in addition to doing that, we now have to take our own freedom back. We have to, well, first of all, the first thing you can do is walk away from this election if you haven't done that, and you're still following that Punch and Judy show. Um, you're allowing yourself <clears throat> to be sucked further and further into that matrix. And believe me, that's hard. Actually, Mindy and I and a friend were just talking about about the election this morning. And I was thinking, why are we talking about that? It's just a joke. Uh, there are a lot of other things you can pull out. We're doing a, uh, a video on cancer and eugenics. And cancer is a big part of their eugenics agenda. They're going to wipe out a lot of people with that. If they can keep the cancer cures under wraps. And there's cancer cures popping out all over. But they're going to be fighting that. And we need to choose freedom. We need to walk away from the allopathic medical uh, part of the eugenics agenda and get into liberation. Okay, want to go Shall back? Shall I continue? Yeah, let's go. Self-overcoming is a Nietzschean concept of transcending one's given standards and values and creating something new out of the ashes of the old. It's the constant adaption and improvisation of the self in regards to the world when we are self-overcoming, we're too busy flourishing to be bothered with attaching ourselves to our particular state of being. We are shedding and thus individuating our pleasing to others skin. We're surrendering to growth, to flexibility, to adaptability, and to moral plasticity. The result is a psychosocial animal becoming a freedom unto itself. A liberated self-overcomer is truly a force to be reckoned with. No authority can command it, not even self-authority, because the liberated self-overcomer is constantly changing. It's already adapting to and overcoming the slings and arrows of vicissitude, whether from the state, from others, or from the self. Indeed, a liberated self-overcomer is transformation incarnate. And I think it's important. I'm, I'm varying from the article for a minute. I think this is really important to realize that we, they, they command us because we allow them to command us. Now, not that the escape is going to be easy or can be done overnight, but adopting some different things to be telling yourself and breaking from the matrix is how we're going to do it. You know, what happens if they have a war and nobody comes? You know those old, those old mottos that they used to throw around in the back 70s and 80s? I think they're true. We don't have to play this game. But as long as we have the authority in our head now, you know, our parents put it in there, our schools put it in there, the media constantly reinforces it. But if we can get rid of that, we can get rid of them. In the end, authoritarianism dissolves into futility under the crushing wave of the liberated self-overcomer. All authoritarian self-speak gets muted under the blaring harmony of self-overcoming. Commands melt into cartoons. Rigid certitude softens into flexible sincerity. 
Inner freedom becomes outer freedom. The inner voice of the liberated self-overcomer is both self-interrogating and voluntary, thus liberating the overcomer into further liberation, which ultimately leads to the liberation of others. For the liberated self-overcomer, the authoritarian culture has lost its stranglehold. Authentic reconditioning of the cultural conditioning is at hand. For, as Carl Jung declared, I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. Right. That's really heavy. I am not what happened to me. Which is, you know, we're always saying, my mother, my father. I'm not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. It's like a forget about the past. You know, they control the past. They control the, the present. But they can't control the future if we divorce ourselves from our past limiting lessons and we focus on going forward. So here's what I see is happening in the, uh, I don't know, you call it the truther, the awakening community. The big icons seem to be washing away. They're not holding our attention or moving us forward. Some of them are falling into ill repute. Some of them are attacking one another. A lot of them, and I always do this, Alex Jones and Jeff Rents and that whole uh, thing, uh, that whole cadre of people have gone over to mainstream media and they're fear mongering and giving us false information, quite frankly. So the, so the movement seems to be dissolving. Even certain YouTubers like us are losing interest in just reporting the atrocities that they're going through. And they're starting to think, well, you know, we know it's bad and we're going to keep awakening people and we're going to keep pulling them along. But the most important thing is that we realize that they don't have any control over us that we don't give them. They're trying to enslave us in many, many ways. But by enslaving us from inside our own heads, by media, by education, by constant reinforcing with our peers, our peers patrolling our political correctness. That's all bullshit. We need to walk away from it. It's not part of our, our, our script to go forward. We're going forward, and I think we're about to make a right turn. Something big is ahead, and we really need to know that we are in charge. Like this article said, I think Gary Z. McGee really hit it on the head. That's why I wanted to read this to you guys and uh, give you some ideas of where this movement might be going now. Because just disclosing things, I mean, you know, we've got, we've got guys that make YouTube videos that can diagnose a false flag while it's going on. I mean, literally, they'll see it. Well, of course, now they expect it to be a false flag but they'll pick it apart right away. I mean, that's all, that's what we've been doing. And it's really great for the new awakening people to see what's going on. But I think now we have to take our freedom back. And I think that might be the vanguard of the next, I don't know, section, section of our liberation. Right, right. The meme is je definitely shifting and you can so feel the shift that's taking place. And we, we feel like pulling back. Like uh, Paul and I personally, we feel like pulling back from all the attention we're giving to the internet, to, the, to you know, all the information and, and weaning ourselves, so to speak, from our involvement with it, which has been so dedicated and so complete. And now we know, no, we need to stay off more and engage in life around us and like music and uh, um, creating art, art. Mm -hmm. and, th and things like that that can free us up now we've we've started shutting down the internet one day a week we stay off of it and you know what after the one day the ev the addiction seems to be lessened that's right um we're not so drawn to it the day after. Of course, after the day, the day after we're back into it, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're giving up a lot of our freedom to find out what's going on because we're curious. But uh, no, we're trying to pull back, and I think we all should be pulling back, taking our freedom back, 
and declaring, you know, we don't work for you guys. Uh, we're our own people. Yeah, that's right. Because I do think that we've been enabling what's been playing out to happen by giving it our attention. And if we don't give it our attention, well, we're not feeding it. So we're not enabling it to continue and to feed upon itself. So more and more, we're removing our attention from this this compulsion to know everything, to, to see everything. And it might be the matrix. Mm -hmm. We might yeah, be it feels as if you've unplugged yourself from the matrix when you get away from your computer for a while. That's right. So, but it is a wonderful tool, and without it, we wouldn't, you know, have these marathons. And we wouldn't be able to talk to you. And we enjoy talking to you a lot. And thank you very much for listening to this marathon. And uh, we hope you find us on our blog, which is pineconeutopia.wordpress.com. We post several times every day. And we're, we're moving not just from news. We're more moving into consciousness awakening kind of stuff like this article we just read you. Also, we have a YouTube channel. Right. Our YouTube channel is called Pinecone Utopia. And we focus on, you know, sharing information and, and synthesizing what we're finding to try to make sense of it from, from our perspective and sharing that with people. So we'll do, you know, research on various things and try to share what we think is, is valuable to help people know, you know, where they're being deceived and where they can step out of that yeah. and take their life back into their own hands. So visit us there whenever you get a chance, and it's been wonderful talking to you. Uh, and this is Pinecone Utopia, Paul Marco, and Mindy Erkin Marco. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Have a great month. Bye-bye.